sisters, brothers, and sisters in Christ Jesus. Believers from every generation have long wanted to know just what Jesus' physical appearance might have looked like. How tall was he? What color were his eyes? How did he wear his hair? Did he sport facial hair? Did he laugh often? Or was his face generally intense? Did he have a hefty or a slim physique? These physical characteristics have fascinated artists throughout the centuries. Moreover, each depiction generally portrayed Jesus to look like the artist himself and his audience or patrons. Today's liturgy fits perfectly with some of those questions in mind, as, did this, as does this ethnically wonderful diverse parish celebrate an annual gathering entitled Africa Day. As we recognize and honor those members of the parish who come from a wide variety of African nations, we praise God for them, as well as for all those who hail from countries in Europe, Asia, Latin and Central America, the Pacific Rim, and each corner of our globe. Even our readings reflect a few of the questions surrounding Jesus' own human identity. The Canaanite woman who appears with her request was not a member of his group. Send her away, they demanded, for she is not one of us. She's not like us. She's a foreigner, like those referred to in Isaiah's lesson. She's probably no better than the Gentiles to whom Paul alludes. Yet Jesus' heart was touched by her faith. And I dare say, so must have been the disciples who had planned to dismiss her simply because she was tenacious and very persistent. She was a Canaanite, a resident of a territory and a member of a community looked down upon by the Jews. Canaanite people were Semites, but they followed a peculiar religious custom and religious traditions. The Canaanites worshiped Baal and served as a constant reminder of Israel's sometimes unfaithful worship of Yahweh. How could Christ be interested in this woman or concerned about her requests? Christ himself almost seems to ratify the bigotry of his disciples in his initial uncaring response. Nonetheless, the fate of the Canaanite woman was too great, too enduring, simply to be dismissed. God's heart is ever open to the entreaty of the humble. And that's a very good thing for all of us. The church listens to these fascinating examples of God's open-heartedness, not merely to be edified, but to be challenged and reminded to love in the same way that God loves. To see Jesus' face in all of God's people, especially the poor, the marginalized, the immigrant, and the neglected. It is not enough to listen to the great compassion of God, to hear the Lord's own desire to welcome 
and to love all men and women. The church listens to the living word because the church herself is called to love in just that very same way. Our hearts are intended to be as open as the heart of God himself. That is why the church is Catholic, because God's love is Catholic, universal, open, and unrestrained. All of us are inclined to love in very limited ways. We love those who love us, our families and friends, but that is not enough. We love those who are nice to us and who think as we do, but that is not enough. We love those who are meek and attractive in their personalities, but that is not enough. We love those who are easy to be with and who do not make themselves meddlesome. But that is not enough. God's love draws no boundaries, demands no precondition, and establishes no limits. God loves Jew and Gentile, rich and poor, learned and simple, saint and sinners. God speaks English, French, Igbo. God speaks all of the languages of the human family. Our Catholic Church is called to be a great sacrament of the love of God. And to the extent that any of one of us might not be so all-embracing, and who among us does not have some limitations on our open-heartedness, we fail to reflect the true nature of the church. The very rich human and cultural composition of our archdiocese, and indeed of this parish itself, must be a living reminder that God's holy face, Jesus' image, is to be found in all of our neighborhoods, in all of our neighbors, and not just in religious pictures or statues, no matter how venerable or cherished, but equally important, we ourselves are to reflect and to display that same face of Christ for all the world to see and to behold. It is my great privilege once again to celebrate with you this year's Africa Day. I feel very comfortable and I know that I've got to wear my best vestments because you're dressed to kill. What a great thing it is to belong to a church that welcomes everyone and who reflects the face of Christ in all of its many and varied beautiful expressions. Amen.